Men will respect other men not so much by the way they look or the way they carry themselves, but by what they bring to the table. What do you bring to the table as a man? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I've been dating a girl for about six months and she's great and we're doing good. But her sister started dating some new guy who I feel completely inferior to and it's screwing my head and getting into my relationship now. I feel he's more of a man than me and that her whole family likes him more. I feel like he's a D-bag, but I know he's much more of a man than me. He shoots guns, he's jacked, and he doesn't have insecurities, and he seems overall just more of a man than me. I met him one time and felt a vibe, like he was sizing me up and he thought he was better than me and would kind of mess with me a bit in a way that I would understand and it was, uh, wasn't noticeable to anybody else. I want her family's approval and to be better than him. How do I get over caring what this kid thinks about me and worrying about it when I'm gonna have to see, the next, see him the next time and get over what her parents think of him in comparison to me and just focus on my relationship? I don't feel like much of a man and I'm timid. I feel nervous to even be in his presence. I know that sounds bitchy, but I'm being honest. Also, how do I deal with getting uh, made fun of by someone who's more alpha than me? When I know he's kicking my ass, also, I know I'm seen as a baby if I responded the way I wanted to and get all offended. So I think this is actually a really good opportunity for you, especially if you see something in this man that you are in awe of, right? And and that's a good feeling. That's a good thing. A lot of times when we see somebody that has something that we have that we don't have and we notice it, we could go one of two ways. We could be angry and jealous or we could be in awe. And when you're in awe, it, notice that both of them are feelings, but it's how you interpret it. You have this sense in your body. You could say that, you know, I feel and you know, the, the sense in your body will then the way you interpret it will will determine your behavior. But if you recognize like, hey, you know, this guy has something that I ain't got and I, can't, I, I am in awe of him. If you just reframe that a little bit, not to say put him on a pedestal, but just acknowledge him. Like, hey, this, that's, you know, I see the way this guy is and he's got some of the traits that I wish I had more of. Then what happens is you are no longer resisting that which you wish to mirror, right? It's nothing wrong with seeing a guy that has something that you want, right? First time, when I started weightlifting when I was a kid, I would always look at guys that had big muscles or guys that were lifting, and I'd be like in awe, like, wow, damn, I want to be like that guy. Rather than, oh, man, that guy thinks he's better than me, or, oh, man, like, look how puny I am. It was never that, and it never should be that. It should always be awe and respect, and that's for you. That's just a matter of reframing it for, your, for yourself so that you don't place yourself below him. Odd, when you're in awe of somebody, it doesn't mean that you're placing them above you. It means that you, or it means that you're respecting them. You respect them for what they have. You're just acknowledging and real recognize real, right? The only way you can recognize the realness in him is if you have it in you. But if you reject it in him, you're going to reject it in you, and you'll never have the thing that you are admiring in that dude. And he does. It sounds like he does have some admirable traits. Now, there's something about that kind of guy that. I'm going to tell you a little secret about, right? He, these, and I place myself in this category because I come off as this way and I have siblings and I have family members and they, they, they kind of like the same way you're, you're seeing him, they see me. And so we are, as far as character structure is concerned, psychopaths, right? And, and psychopaths are very strong, we're very dominating. We have loud voices. We're usually very seen. We're good leaders, right? Alpha males. But we have very soft hearts. Usually we want to help people, right? That's what makes, that's what, you know, if you want to soften a strong man, ask him for help. Ask him for help. So one of the things that you could do when you're dealing with him, right, is he say he shoots guns and say, hey, buddy, I've never, I never shot guns before. Uh, when's the next time you're going? I would love if you taught me. Just if you even say that to him, like, would you be willing to teach me? Basically, ask, you, you're humbling yourself in a way, but it also brings you up to his level. It, it's a strange thing that when you kind of humble yourself by asking for help, you literally ascend. 
It's usually the per- oftentimes it's the person that asks for help that is that is now. And, and of course, I talk about hierarchies, and it's good to be hi- hi- hierarchical. Men are hierarchical. We can't deny that. You could check out and pretend, but the fact is, there's hierarchies. There's always hierarchies. It's based on our energy. It's based on our stature. It's based on our status. It's based on what we can do. And I'm going to tell you more about what you can do in a moment. But in the meantime, reframe the situation. You're in awe of him. Secondly, soften him up a little bit by asking for help. Admire him. Tell him you admire him. There's nothing, there's nothing soft about that. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you a weak person. It makes you a weak person if you're jealous. It makes you a weak person if you pout or you turn around and, and, and don't acknowledge him. That's the, the worst thing you can do is don't acknowledge him. Then you're really weak because you're not willing to confront. But I'm not saying be confrontational in an aggressive way. Be confrontational in a yielding way. There's tremendous power to asking questions, asking for help. Asking for help. Hey, buddy, I noticed that you like to shoot guns. Or I saw your Instagram the other day. That looked like a lot of fun. Would you be willing to take me next time? Yeah, we'll leave the girls at home. He will love that. This kind of guy, alpha male, psychopath type, if you tell him, hey, let's leave the girls at home and you know, I'll go with you shooting next time, he's going to think that's awesome, right? Because for a number of reasons, that makes him that makes him like a cool guy. His girl gets to see that he's, you know, he's being a man with the other men. Uh, your girl gets to see that you being a man with an alpha male man, the whole family gets to see, hey, these boys that my daughters are dating, they're getting along, they're going about, they're doing things. No, nothing but goodness can come from you asking him for help. That's I probably would say do the, the shoot, gun shooting thing, right? Go shoot guns with him, right? Let, let, him, uh, let him take you and show you. The other thing is this here, and this is really important. This is really important as it, as it relates to relationships with men. And men, we don't know how to have relationships anymore. Why don't men know how to have relationships with other men anymore? Because the school has taught us to behave like women. The, the minute they started integrating boys and girls in the school, masculinity was lost. Boys and girls should be educated separately, in my opinion, because it teaches boys how to be with boys and girls how to be with girls. There's time later for us to figure out intersexual dynamics, but if we integrate as boys and girls too early, both sexes lose themselves. But that's what the culture wants. They want gender confusion. That's what we have. So it's better that boys be with boys and girls be with girls. And we learn how to be amongst each other in that way, right? Especially when there are male teachers and male mentors with the young men. That's the way it should be. So we've lost all that. But we have evidence. We have history. We have things that we can look to. And Jack Donovan is a very good writer on things on all things masculine. He's written a lot of good books, one of which is called The Way of Men. And in The Way of Men, he talks he talks very plainly about how, how men know each other through an evolutionary standpoint and why we, why we deal with each other in a hierarchical nature. And part of the reason why we do that is because men, men know each other by working together. Women know each other by talking to each other. Men know each other by doing stuff together. And in order to have a high place in the hierarchy of men, you got to be good at doing stuff with men. And it doesn't matter what you look like or how you, how uh, you know, tall you are, or how muscular you are. It has nothing to do with it. it has to do with proficiency. It has to do with mastery at something. Case in point: I grew up playing football, right? I was played high school and college football, right? Now on a football team, you have men of various statures. You've got like six foot six, three hundred pound linemen. You got short jack stack uh, linebackers, but then you also have kickers, punters, right? You have even the quarterback. These are quieter guys. The quarterback is very cerebral. He may not be as jack, may not his voice might not be as deep. He may not be as alpha looking and behaving as maybe like the linebacker or even the kicker, right? The kicker. This dude, they're usually skinny. They're usually not very athletic. They're just little guys, probably about a foot shorter than everybody else on the team. But they get massive respect from all those big guys. Why? Because he brings something to the table. He brings something to the table. He offers value to the team. Men will be men will respect other men, not so much by the way they look or the way they carry themselves, but by what they bring to the table. What do you bring to the table as a man? First, go in with the ask for help. Secondly, show up as a master in some domain. 
show proficiency in something, right? Maybe you're good with computers or something like that, right? And you check out like, you know, he's, he's, uh, you guys are shooting guns and, you know, he gets in his car and he doesn't know how to fix the computer in the car or some shit like that. Just say, hey, bro, let me help you out with this because uh, I'm an expert in these kind of computers. Right? You could be a skinny nerd. You could be a skinny, you know, limp dick nerd. But as soon as you hop on that dude's computer and you fix some problem he has or he sees you mastering something over there that he has no, he can't. And if he sees in his head, wow, that's, that's pretty valuable. Right. Like, so, for example, let's say you know how to you know how to garden. Right. Or you know how to maybe you know how to, to grow stuff or whatever. it is. There's something that you know how to do that would be good for you to demonstrate your competence. Look, look, I can, you know, I, I can bring something to the table, too. The reason now going back to Jack Donovan in the book, he talks about how men would know each other because we spent time on the fringes. We would spend, spend time on the border protecting and pursuing. Right. Women would stay inside. They would build culture. They would tend to the children. Men would be on the outside. And we would you. The only way that you can get along with the men on the outside is if the other men trust you to hold up your end of the deal. Is this guy good at something? It's like the Avengers, right? The Avengers, right? Like this guy's very strong, but this guy has another superpower. This guy can fly. This guy has, he can freeze stuff. This guy can burn stuff. Whatever the fuck it is. I don't watch those movies. But they all, they, they're all different, but they all contribute something to the, to the greater mission. And that's the way men think. If you show up and you show proficiency, not in a not in a uh, in an arrogant way, not in a show off way, but in a helpful way, right? Ask for help first, but then start helping. He can't help but to respect you. And I'll leave you with this one piece right here: wit and humor. Wit and humor are alpha male traits. It doesn't matter what you look at look like. Do you remember this uh, comedian? I don't know why I remember his name. His name is Ralphie. He must have been like 400 pounds, big, fat, white guy. But he was hilarious. Or just remember like Biggie Smalls, right? Biggie Smalls was huge, fat, ugly. He even called himself ugly. These kinds of men who are fat, who are ugly, unattractive, become very, very, very attractive because of their wit and because of their humor. You ever notice that you ever have like a group of friends and like, you know, everybody as men do, like they're kind of everybody has their role and it's sort of a hierarchy. But you got that one friend that's funny. He's just funny. He's ugly. He's skinny or he's fat. but He's funny and he gets so much respect. Somebody says something and he's the first one to spit something witty. Right. If you come at him, look, if this if this young man comes at you, you got to learn how to stay cool and just throw back the wit. You got to throw it back at him. I think Jack Donovan talks about it in the book. But you, but the worst thing you could do is get emotional or or ignore him. If you ignore a shit test, because men will shit test men, because they want to see what you're made of, especially an alpha male type like this guy. He wants to see what you're made of. He's not a bad guy. He just he's around other guys, and so he wants to establish dominance, right? It's a it's a normal male thing to do. But a lot of men don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to deal with it. They get all caught up in their feelings. And then they need to go home to their safe space. But he, if he throws something your, your way, the fastest way to get respect from him is to knock it right back. Right? One of the ways they say to do that is to agree and amplify. Right? Right? Agree and amplify. He calls you something, say, yeah, I'm that, and then some. Ooh. See what I'm saying? So being an alpha male doesn't necessarily require a loud voice. doesn't require a lot of muscles. It doesn't require to be six foot six, right? It doesn't require that you shoot guns. It requ- it's what's required is that you bring something to the table, that you're confident in some way, that you are trustworthy. That's huge. Trust is huge. You stand by your word, right? You honor your commitments, right? And you give respect where respect is due, right? And so I think this is an opportunity. I think this is great. I really like this question. And I think that you're going to do real well if you just just try those little things. Reframe it in your mind that you're in awe of him and that's okay. means that you see something in him that you know is buried within you. You can't be triggered by someone 
if they're not saying something that touches a spot within you or they're not doing something or carrying themselves in a way that touches a spot in you. So what you see in him is actually in you. So when you're in awe of somebody, you're really in a, in a lot of ways, you're in awe of yourself because you're like, wow, I'm seeing this mirrored in front of me. I'm seeing what this, how this man is carrying himself as a mirror of some aspect of myself that I could use a little bit more sharpening on, right? That's all for you. Lead with humility by asking for help and then demonstrate competence and dominance by what you bring to the table, dude. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yup, Andrew says that he uh, he likes to retreat. Don't retreat. You retreat shows weakness. Don't retreat. If he comes at you, don't come at him hard. Don't come at him aggressive. Don't come at him angry. Laugh. Laugh it. Laugh at it. If he says a joke about you, laugh about it, right? If he tests you, laugh about it. And then say, yup, and then just throw it right back at him, right? It's good. It's good. It's good for men to do that with one another, right? That's how we get to know each other. You know, you're, you're, don't take it like you're being attacked, brother. Because you, sh you show your true colors when you get emotional about it. Then it's like, oh, you really are a beta male, right? Like if, if you look like a beta male and then you act like a beta male, you know what they say about a duck? Look like a duck. Quack like a duck, walk like a duck. That's a duck. You don't want to be a duck, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.